Astronauts from China are stranded aboard the space station. Echoing Boeing's Starliner issues, could SpaceX's Dragon help? Russia faces Soyuz challenges as MS-28 nears, while Rocket Lab delays its Neutron debut, possibly due to Starship V3 competition. What do these events mean for the global space race? Find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. As in the previous update, we are aware that the Chinese Shenzhou-20 spacecraft encountered an un unfortunate incident involving space debris. I call it unfortunate because the problem occurred while the spacecraft was still docked at the Tiangong space station. This encounter may have caused the spacecraft to develop a leak, potentially creating serious risks if the crew attempted to return to Earth as originally scheduled. The situation became more complicated when the incident happened after the new crew, Shenzhou-21, arrived at Tiangong. This sudden overlap of two crews in the station increased pressure on available living space as well as food and other resources. Paradoxically, having two crews on board might also aid in addressing the spacecraft issue more efficiently, as more hands are available to troubleshoot and implement solutions. China has been providing updates on social media platforms such as Weibo to inform the public and the aerospace community about how it is handling the problem. On November 5th, which was the original expected return date for Shenzhou 20, the China Manned Space Agency, or CMSA, stated spacecraft is suspected, suspected of being struck by small space debris, and impact analysis and risk assessments are underway. In a subsequent update on on the 11th, CMSA provided a more detailed report. The Shenzhou-20 manned spacecraft return mission, the project adheres to the principle of life first, safety first. Emergency plans and measures have been immediately activated. Comprehensive simulation analysis, testing, and safety assessments of the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft are ongoing. The implementation plan for the return of the Shenzhou-20 astronaut crew has been studied, and all tests, joint debugging, and coordinated assessments are being carried out strictly according to procedure. Key product status, key product status and quality confirmations have been organized, and the landing site is conducting comprehensive drills for the return mission. All work is progressing steadily and in an orderly manner as planned. In addition, CMSA has sought to reassure the international aerospace community by stating, at present, the space station assembly is in normal condition and has the ability to support two astronaut crews in orbit. The Shenzhou-20 astronaut crew is working and living normally while jointly conducting in-orbit scientific experiments with the Shenzhou-20 astronaut crew. Despite this optimism, there remains uncertainty about the actual state of the spacecraft. It's clear that this situation mirrors some of the challenges faced in the past. The Shenzhou-20 crew is now in space longer than originally planned, drawing parallels to the Star Starliner CFT-1 mission a year ago, where the astronauts were also stranded longer than intended. Of course, the underlying causes are different. Shenzhou-20 is dealing with damage from external debris, including potential leaks, while Starliner's delay was due to internal technical issues, such as thruster malfunctions and helium leaks. So how can China resolve the current problem? It's likely that internal handling will be the first priority. One option is for the two crews to assist each other in troubleshooting the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft to enable a return as planned. This approach, however, has significant drawbacks. The extra crew on board Tiangong increases the consumption of food and other life support resources, which may necessitate urgent cargo missions to restock the station. Another option is to use a different spacecraft for the return. China could send a new vehicle to bring the Shenzhou-20 crew home, while the damaged Shenzhou-20 spacecraft returns uncrewed, similar to the Starliner contingency approach. Alternatively, in urgent circumstances, the Shenzhou-20 crew could return aboard the Shenzhou-21 spacecraft while the Shenzhou-21 crew waits for a replacement vehicle. Both options carry risks. The first approach leaves Shenzhou-20 crew members in space for a longer period without certainty about when a rescue vehicle could be ready. Preparing an emergency crewed spacecraft is complex, as it requires careful refurbishment and safety validation. China currently has Shenzhou-18 and 19 under refurbishment but 19 is already planned for Shenzhou-22, leaving 18 as the only plausible rescue vehicle. The second approach risks stranding the Shenzhou-21 crew. In human spaceflight, a crew always requires a reliable return vehicle at the station in case of emergency. No mission can safely leave astronauts without access to a spacecraft capable of evacuation. Even if a replacement spacecraft is arranged, delivering it to Tiangong presents additional challenges. To allow sufficient space for the return operation, 
operation, the new vehicle must be launched uncrewed. Flying a spacecraft without a control crew on board carries risks, as ground operators cannot fully compensate for all in-orbit procedures. Even if two people manage the vehicle during, during launch and docking, the return trip may become cramped and difficult to operate. Given these complexities, the most practical course may be to handle the situation internally and wait until the Shenzhou 20 spacecraft issue is fully resolved. Although this increases pressure on station resources and introduces uncertainty about timing, it ensures that the mission proceeds safely without introducing additional complications. If internal solutions prove insufficient, outside support may need to be considered. The most viable option would clearly be SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. Starliner has ongoing technical challenges since last year's accident, and Russia's Soyuz vehicles are also facing their own issues. Dragon is proven, reliable, and versatile, making it the best candidate for emergency crew return. If internal solutions fail, China would have to seriously consider Dragon as a contingency. Beyond the immediate rescue, this incident highlights the need for better international transparency and collaboration in space operations. While China and the U.S. are competitors in many aspects, space exploration is a shared human endeavor, and challenges such as space debris affect everyone, establishing communication and coordinated response mechanisms could allow the international community to handle such incidents more effectively and safely. The broader implication is that the world may need a dedicated space rescue fleet. With increasing numbers of satellites and debris in orbit, risks to crewed spacecraft are growing. In such a system, SpaceX's Dragon would naturally play a leading role due to its proven reliability and operational flexibility. If deployed, this would be a significant milestone for Dragon and the global spaceflight community. Although the likelihood of requiring Dragon for a rescue mission is currently low, it remains a possible solution following the Starliner incident last year. The primary concern remains the safe return of the Shenzhou 20 crew. Whatever happens, it's critical for the international space community to support and monitor these efforts closely. Do you think China should use Dragon if it becomes necessary? Let me know with a yes or a no in the comment section down below. Regardless of the choice, the most important thing is to send our best wishes and encouragement to the Shenzhou 20 crew so that they can return safely back to Earth. Up to this point, we've focused on the challenges facing other spacecraft, setting aside SpaceX's Dragon. But China isn't alone. Russia is also navigating its own hurdles in human spaceflight, highlighting that even established programs face significant obstacles. Specifically, Roscosmos is preparing for the MS-28 mission, which will carry two Russian cosmonauts, Sergei Kudsverchkov and Sergei Mikhaev, along with an American astronaut, Christopher Williams, who was selected earlier this year to replace Oleg Platonov. The mission is currently scheduled for November 27th. Initially, the Soyuz MS-759 spacecraft was planned to be used for this mission. However, during a routine post-production check conducted by the manufacturer RKK Energia, major damage was discovered in the spacecraft's heat shield system. According to sources, the main thermal control heat shield, which is mounted at the base of the descent module, unexpectedly jettisoned. This may have been caused by a stray signal that activated the pyrotechnic bolts connecting the shield's frisbee-shaped structure to the capsule. Another source suggested that the heat shield may have detected due to a test failure during the post-production inspection. Given the severity of this issue, it's highly unlikely that the spacecraft can be repaired in time for the current mission schedule. As a result, Roscosmos has adjusted its plans. They are now aiming to use Soyuz MS number 752 and 753 which previously served tourist missions for the MS-28 mission. The original number 759 spacecraft will be delayed and reassigned to the MS-29 mission. This situation shows that Russia is also facing challenges with its human spaceflight system, although these issues are somewhat easier to manage compared to the complex scenario China is dealing with at Tiangong. For now, we will have to wait and see how Roscosmos handles the situation and whether the new spacecraft assignment proceed smoothly. Shifting back to the U.S., attention turns to Rocket Lab and its upcoming Neutron rocket. Rocket Lab originally had planned to launch Neutron, a unique, reusable rocket, by the end of this year. However, the company has now postponed the mission to early next year. This information was shared in Rocket Lab's third quarter financial report, which 
nonetheless shows encouraging signs of progress in the development process. Rocket Lab's CEO Peter Beck explained the reasoning behind the delay, emphasizing meticulous preparation and prioritizing mission success over rushing to meet arbitrary deadlines. He said, with all the hardware in front of us now and significant testing programs underway across all parts of the vehicle, we can say we need a little bit more time to retire the risks, he continued. We have seen what happens when others rush to the pad with an unproven product, and we refuse to do that. You will not see us cutting corners or claiming success prematurely. We want to learn everything possible during ground testing before the first flight. He concluded by noting, at the end of the day, Neutron will fly when we are very confident it is ready, and we're not going to break the mold of Rocket Lab's approach and standards. Overall, Rocket Lab's challenges appear to be related to both the vehicle and the launch system, but the company's careful approach indicates a strong commitment to success. They also want this first flight to set the stage for future reuse and reliability demonstrations. Looking at the bigger picture, this delay creates an interesting dynamic in the near future. SpaceX's Starship Flight 12, which is the first V3 flight, has also been postponed to January next year. Could Rocket Lab be positioning Neutron to create a high-profile competition with SpaceX's Starship V3 early next year? It's certainly possible, and it promises to be an exciting matchup for the commercial space sector. Space Space enthusiasts are already looking forward to what could become a remarkable head-to-head -head moment in the next chapter of orbital launch activity, with both companies aiming for innovation, reusability, and milestone-setting flights. Early next year could mark one of the most closely watched periods in modern spaceflight history. Are you ready to see how this competition unfolds, and who will achieve the next major breakthrough first? In any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.